videos, we've had a fair amount of idea about the topical fluorides used in dental practice. But did you know, with the currently used topical fluorides, about two-thirds of the fluoride acquired after the treatment is lost within days? For this, it has been noted that increasing the time of contact between the enamel surface and topical fluoride agents favors the deposition of more permanently bound fluoroapatite and fluorohydroxyapatite. This is achieved by incorporating the fluoride component directly into a varnish-like coating material. A fluoride varnish is usually indicated in cases of incipient caries when a restoration is done under general anesthesia as well as in cases of handicapped children. Talking about the various types of fluoride varnishes, Durafat was the first one to be developed in Germany. Its sodium fluoride in varnish form, containing 2.26% of fluoride, that is 22,600 ppm fluoride, suspended in an alcoholic solution of natural organic varnishes. It has been shown to reduce caries incident by 30-40% to 40 in permanent dentition, while caries in primary dentition have been reduced by 7-44% to 44 after the use of Durafat. The second type is Fluor Protector, which is a clear, polyurethane-based product containing 7,000 ppm fluoride from an organic compound, difluorosilane. Although it has an efficacy range between 1-17%, to 17 unlike Durafat, its clinical effectiveness is questionable. Kerex is another fluoride varnish which contains a lower fluoride concentration than Durafat but has the efficacy equivalent to that of Durafat as a caries preventive agent. Now, talking about the technique of its application, after prophylaxis of the patient's teeth is done, the teeth are then dried with the help of an air syringe but not isolated since varnish tends to stick to cotton. Now, note that a total of 0.3 to 0.5 ml of varnish, which is roughly equivalent to 6.9 to 11.5 mg of fluoride, is required to cover the full dentition. A single tufted small brush is used for varnish application, which is done first on the lower arch and then on the upper arch. One must always remember to start with the proximal surfaces when applying the varnish. Once done with the application, the patient is asked to sit with their mouth open for 4 minutes before spitting. This is to let the Durafat set on the teeth, which is further enhanced by the saliva. Now, although Durafat is commonly used, remember that Flop Protector sits faster than Durafat. Before letting the patient go, they must be asked not to rinse or drink anything at all for 1 hour and also to not eat anything solid but only take liquids and semi-solids till the next morning. This allows the contact between the varnish and tooth surfaces for about 18 hours, thus allowing prolonged interaction between fluoride and enamel. In conclusion, although brushing with fluoridated toothpaste and flossing are still the best ways to maintain good oral health, fluoride varnishes can also be used as an adjunct to protect teeth from decay, as it's both simple and affordable. Now that we have a better understanding, let's answer a couple of frequently asked questions. Which of the following do you think have the highest concentration of fluorides? A. Fluoride gels B. Fluoride mouth rinse C. Fluoride varnish D. Toothpaste Yes, the correct answer is option C. Fluoride varnish Next question. Which of the following types of varnishes have the highest concentration of fluoride? A. Fluor protector B. Durafat C. Kerex D all have the same concentration of fluoride. The correct answer, as you might recall, is option B, Durafat, with a fluoride concentration of 2.26%. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.